This is a nice floor. Wooden veneer. I'd give this 8 out of 10. Welcome to another episode of Floored with Kai. And today we are talking about NFT news, Sappy Seals, and Cardano. So uh, this guy right here, Wab Wabdo Teeth, no, I'm not going to say it properly, is uh, going on a tirade of engagement farming about Cardano NFTs. And it's the weird weirdest thing ever. If you see here, he's... Uh, He's got the Cardano founder as a as a sappy seal. Uh, you go through the timeline; is just constant Cardano, 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 and uh, yeah, it's pretty much it. It's it's really funny and uh, it's kind of uh, entertaining. Now the the thing for me is, I can't actually tell if he's trolling or if he's actually uh, bullish on Cardano NFTs because uh, half of the posts are like, you know, I'm going to pick up this weird looking tree thing. And then the other half of the posts are just memes that are basically uh, uh, shitting on Cardano NFTs. Uh, he even got blocked by some Cardano <laughs> influencer accounts right here. It is... Uh, is pretty hilarious and uh, a lot of other people are talking about it so it's not just uh, the seals guy uh, it's you know a lot of people are talking about it and uh, he's been doing it enough now that everyone on the timeline or well, not everyone but a lot of people on the timeline are talking about Cardano NFTs now are Cardano NFTs a thing I don't think so from what I can tell, they're not actually a thing. But they do have a very small, tight-knit community. And uh, they're very loyal to Cardano. So let me explain it from the point of view of Bitcoin and Ethereum. And the reason I'm doing that is because... Cardano uses uh, UTXO from what I understand. Now that doesn't mean it's like it's that similar to Bitcoin because it, you know it's got smart contracts and its own consensus algorithm and all that. But when you look at the the Bitcoin community in a sense, Bitcoin maxis, they're very loyal to Bitcoin. And, you know, that's a small group, you know, with Bitcoin, it's like everyone holds some Bitcoin. So you don't have to be a Bitcoin maxi to hold Bitcoin. But there's a group of very dedicated Bitcoin followers that only hold Bitcoin. And they believe, you know, Bitcoin is like the true cryptocurrency, which is the original, etc. And, uh, you know, these guys are basically fanatics. So the Cardano NFT community is also a bunch of fanatics. And if you can get them to support you, then you have a big, uh, you know, a large amount of uh, diehard fans because they're so fanatic about this blockchain that they support. That means they also support all of the NFTs that are being built on top of this blockchain. So that's my opinion. It's not that, it's not so much a Cardano NFT community, it's more like, the Cardano community and the Cardano community is going to support anything that is related to Cardano just like you know the Bitcoin community would do the same. Uh, now uh, I wanted to show I'm trying to find it but basically uh, <laughs> there was a retweet it was a Cardano NFT member and he managed to uh, he he basically bought a seal and i thought wow that's some a tier engagement farming right there because he got a cardano nft fan to buy an ethereum nft the seal just by constantly posting about cardano and i think that's fantastic Yeah, summary of what you missed in CT this weekend. 
web do teeth cardano <laughs> yeah. right okay now on to a slightly more technical topic uh, this guy here Dom apparently the creator of vine I mean really like the the Twitter TikTok thing before TikTok happened if that's really the case I mean that's pretty awesome now uh, this guy basically he came up with this algorithm to upload different uh, JavaScript libraries to the to the blockchain to, to Ethereum and then those can be used uh, used with uh, by different uh, uh, NFT projects to create you know 3D on chain NFTs. Now this is very similar to what I did with Clay. It's almost uh, it's it's almost identical, but uh, there are some like key differences. It, it one of the big biggest differences is that in his case uh, he is uploading entire 3JS. Uh, now with Clay, what I did was initially I was using 3JS, but because I wanted to have it all on chain and 3JS is really big, and it's not something that I wanted to put on chain. I ended up uh, refactoring the code to use pure WebGL calls. Now, of course, that meant the programming experience for myself uh, was a bit more difficult because I had to optimize it to uh, not use a, an easy library that you know does a lot of the 3D heavy lifting for you. I ended up coding in pure WebGL, uh, which is slightly more difficult, but I managed to get the code base down uh, to, to a small amount and so that I don't have to actually uh, upload a gigantic library. But uh, that can be all moot point because uh, with his idea is that you would upload these reusable libraries and as long as you just upload it once, you would, uh, uh, you know, you could, you could reuse it in a different project, uh, which is not, not a bad idea. I think it's pretty cool. And if you look at the, the different posts here, so this is a post kind of uh, showing a... I don't know what that is. It's like a solar system stars kind of visualization. Here's a flow chart. And yeah, so this is the concept. It's basically like on chain NPM. And uh, here's a flow chart. And basically, this is what happens uh, the library gets compressed. So, you know, 3JS minified about 600 kilobytes that gets compressed uh, further. I'm not sure what the size is post compression. He says here. No. Then that because even after you compress it, it's still too big to fit into one contract. So in his case, he had to split 3JS up over nine different contracts. Then you have another contract that pulls data from each contract and combines it together. Then that gets put into a data URI that has the HTML code, the compressed JavaScript library, and the helper tool. Now the helper tools contain a decompressor that decompresses this library on the fly once you load it into the website. I had, a, I had almost the same idea when I was working on Clay as well, but I decided to not upload the library and instead optimize the code to make it smaller. So my method was to just get rid of the library entirely and, and, and code it from scratch. And that kind of, that's how I achieved, you know, uploading that uh, on-chain. Uh, whereas this method, uh, and I also, yeah, had the, the, the compress and decompress idea, but the, the thing with that is that you need to uh, kind of weigh off, weigh the trade-off between the, you know, the, the, the extra overhead of the decompressor because that also needs to be put on-chain into the data URI. Is, are you compressing it enough that it makes sense to have the decompressor? And I think in this case uh, it would be because uh, according to him, without the compression, rather than splitting it between nine contracts, you would have to split it between 25 contracts. So that's roughly a 60% reduction in size, uh, which is good, yeah. So yeah, so, so after that gets loaded, it, it gets decompressed and then basically you get the full uh, the full data URI. 
Yeah, it's pretty neat. I'm obviously a big fan of this because uh, I like on-chain and I like 3D. So if we actually look at it, uh, here it is. It's a 3D rose that's spinning. This is, you know, uh, one thing, uh, one possibility of what can be achieved. Now there's a 0 0.2 offer on this, but no volume because I, I don't think he actually intends to sell it. And just like Clay, the uh, the, the OpenSea preview is just a uh, a funny looking SVG. So huh, whoever said that is a weird thing about Clay, well, this guy ran into the exact same issue. <laughs> uh, so looking at the contract, this is this is not the contract for the rose itself directly. So I actually followed a bunch of links. So you start here. The contract for the rose uh, has the uh, has interface hello world render, which takes a token URI. So the the render is not actually available here to view. So what you do is you go to the transactions and you find the latest set render which is here, and you go down, you click decode, and that's, that'll get you to here. So here, what we have is, oh, let me zoom in a bit, we have this thing called data chunk compiler. And so on the render, you can see here, you can set the addresses of the 3JS contract so which has been split over nine different data chunks and then you can use the uh, data chunk compiler to concatenate and that's all here uh, concatenate the data chunks from the nine different contracts and he's got like compile one two three four depending on how many contracts data has been split between and after that you have the actual the Animation URL. This is the this is the, the the JSON. The name of the JSON object. You have some info for the the head of the HTML. Uh, you have some data around the uh, tags for the script that has been compressed, and then you have the script itself for the actual NF, uh, NFT. And then here you have the uh, looks like some uh, boilerplate and also uh, 3JS code for the uh, NFT itself. I'm not sure if the if this if what we're seeing here this URL encoding encoded message if this is the entirety of the 3JS code for the NFT or whether as in as in the, the application logic or whether it's split between here and the, this part. In fact, now looking at this, uh, looking at this, I'm pretty certain this is the entirety of the application logic here. And it's basically a, a, an HTML file with a canvas and uh, some inline JavaScript code that calls 3GS and uh, draw, draws the rows. So basically, this is the entirety of the of the code right here, w which is nice. It means that because you're using a, a pretty hefty library, you can the, the code to actually generate the 3D is is a lot shorter. Yeah, and it's pretty cool. Uh, one one question I had about this is why he's not why he's URL encoding everything rather than base64 encoding it because you can base64 encode it and I might just have to ask because uh, you know looking at the code by itself it's it's hard to know why certain decisions were made but if it was me I would probably base64 encode it there might be some reason why you cannot though because of the uh, the perhaps because of the 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 on-the-fly uh, JavaScript decompressor. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. Um, just another quick thing, because uh, episode is a pretty quick one. Uh, S7S station reveal today. Uh, I'm not affiliated. I just saw the reveal on my timeline and, and wanted to show you guys. Uh, I think it looks not too bad. It looks kind of nice. Poses are interesting. Yeah, it's like a you know anime 
PFP thing, you know, which is probably good with all the hype that Izuki's getting lately. Uh, it's not like outstanding or anything, but it's it's not terrible either. It, it's it's I'll say the best way to describe it is decent. Okay, moving on. This is the contract fail of the day. And uh, look, I'm really sorry for this guy and, and, and whoever invested in the project, but the amount of the amount of times he's messed up is is uh, kind of funny. And um, it's just really strange. It's like he's able to He's able to create this amazing uh, contract, this amazing on-chain game, and somehow he's uh, messed up several times. Uh, first time he set the wrong price. I believe they it was meant to be zero point zero one. They set zero point one, so now they have to refund everyone. Uh, then, after all of that, say he hasn't slept for forty eight hours. Then he said, screw it up again. And, to, and you look at the contract, and there's no withdraw function. And that is uh, really strange. Uh, let me see if I can actually track down the contract itself. Yeah, so this is it here. This is the ta Tamagotchi. Tamagogi contract and it's a pretty it's a pretty nice contract like it's very long um, is it does all this on-chain stuff like it's it's got these on-chain game elements uh, you have data you have you know the, the the pets have like different attributes so it's not like written by someone who's completely new to solidity or anything but they forgot to put over the draw function Look, I control F, nothing. There, uh, there's a send or a transfer. There's just nothing. There's no way to get this this twenty one ETH. There's no way to get it out. And uh, he even reached out to an on my mouse dev who is known for saving certain contracts like Akatars. And basically, yeah, I don't think he can do anything about this either, in all honesty, because it's just stuck there. No one can get it out. So yeah, it kind of sucks. Uh, but at the same time, it's a pretty major fail. Yeah, so it gives me something to share. All right. Uh, that's all for this episode. Hopefully, I've kept it shorter because the past few episodes ran quite long and uh, see you next time.